Martin Luther King Day in the United States has been marked with a march in the capital to demand greater protection of voting rights. President Joe Biden has promised to pass a new law but lacks support in the Senate. Democrats argue new legislation is needed especially for ethnic minority and lower income workers. Some 19 Republican-led states have made it harder to vote in response to former President Donald Trump's false claims about election rigging. We're here to call on President Biden and the Senate to pass the Freedom to Vote John R. Lewis Act and to warn that our democracy stands on the brink of serious trouble without these bills. Last week, the president said he's tired of being quiet about voting rights. Well, we're tired of being patient. Since January 6, 2021, when the insurrectionists attacked our capital, 19 legislatures have passed 34 laws clawing back voting rights for their citizens. In states like my home state, where new laws, I should say of Georgia, are designed to confuse voters so they don't know where to go. They kick people off the voter rolls so they show up to vote and find out they're not registered. They close polling stations and limit voting hours so working parents and folks without access to transportation can't get there in time. These laws are being passed with knife-like precision to cut black and brown voters out of the process. And they're exactly what the Voting Rights Act wants protected against. Mr. President, Senator, Senator Manchin, Senator Sinema, members of the Senate, pass the Freedom to Vote John R. Lewis Act now. If you can deliver an infrastructure bill for bridges, you can deliver voting rights for Americans. If you do not, there's no bridge in this nation that can hold the weight of that failure. Arise U.S. correspondent Rotimi Kade joins us now for more. Rotimi, thanks so much for joining us on Newsday. The Senate is due to press ahead with voting rights. What can we expect later today? Well, there, there's a lot of expectations uh, today, and um, the Democrats in particular will be hoping that uh, Senator Kirsten Sinema and uh, Senator Joe Manchin will change their mind after debates and to see the reason why votes and rights um, bill it's very important to America, especially now that in a couple of months from now that there would be uh, a midterm elections that could change the course of the uh, Biden administration. Uh, a very typical uh, midterm elections always doesn't go with um, the, the White House um, in recent memories. So um, Biden administration is fighting tooth and nail uh, to ensure that um, that tide is changed, but is running really low on gas. The reason being that uh, the president was not really on board with the change of the poster from the beginning uh, up until now. And many analysts believe that that is too little too late for the president to start fighting for the voting rights and when it should have been the number one priority when it came to office uh, to ensure that um, a voting rights stays, especially on the back of, um, um, the, on the, back of um, the uh, Trump's um, uh, misinformation about the 2020 elections. Yeah, that's definitely right. But um, we heard the very strong comments uh, coming from Martin Luther King Jr., Will the Democratic voters take their revenge at the polls if they can't get anything through at the Senate? Uh, well, I, I don't think so. I think um, the right now they, they are walking on a very tight mm -hmm. rope uh, because mm -hmm. uh, Kirsten Sinema's and uh, Joe Manchin argument, sometimes you, if you look at it, may have a very genuine argument. Uh, the reason being that if you change the filibuster rule right now and if the Republicans come into office, perhaps during these midterm elections, uh, they could take advantage of that. So Democrats won't have any fighting chance to push back any uh, Republican agenda. So uh, they want the rules to remain um, at the detriment of the voting rights. Um, so it's like a double-edged sword. The election is coming. 
uh, states that have passed uh, voter, restric uh, voter restrictions, uh, which could hinder um, the uh, Democratic uh, base. And um, at the same time, if you don't change the filibuster, uh, some of these rules uh, would cannot be overturned by the federal law. So um, I really don't know how that will be. But uh, from some of these uh, things we're hearing, that um, most likely uh, after the long debate today, uh, Senator Chuck Schumer, the Senate majority, uh, may just call for a vote, which is a simple majority, without necessarily changing uh, the filibuster rule. And uh, Rotimi, given all that is happening right now, what could be next? Well, what is next? It would be a disaster in waiting uh, for the uh, Biden administration. Uh, when you look at the polling uh, of um, the president, his achievements so far in the last one year, it hasn't been very impressive. A lot of Americans believe that he could have done more. He made a lot of promises. Uh, but he has uh, fallen short of uh, many of them. So um, at this point, uh, the president would have to be fighting so hard, um, especially uh, to uh, some of the uh, hue and cry of the progressive wings of the Democratic Party, uh, which the likes of AOC and the rest um, have been crying for. But at the same time, the Democrats right now um, may have um, a lot to work on as uh, we move forward to uh, the elections. But on the filibuster today, I think uh, it's going to be a very harsh debate, a very long debate uh, between uh, both sides uh, criticizing each other. And uh, whether the president has the needed weight to uh, pull um, this um, through, I really don't know. The president has had a couple of meetings with uh, Senator uh, Kirsten Senators. Um, both in the White House and also in his house in Delaware, uh, to see how he can change their mind. But if he can't do that, I don't think today's debate would uh, change their minds. Well, Rotomi, this call for greater protection of voting rights, you know, doesn't it lead credence, you know, to what the former president, Donald Trump, alleged, you know, that the election was stolen from him? Yes, of course, yes. It, it's lent a credits to that. Uh, but, of course, you know that the uh, former president's claims um, has absolutely uh, been uh, quashed um, in, um, in in the court of law and even at the Supreme Court that it has no legal standing. All of the um, allegations are absolutely uh, is null and void. But the misinformation and the disinformation is still very much in the air. And a lot of people both liberals and Republicans are still believing that there could be some sort of manipulation that happened in 2020 elections. So the voting rights um, legislation that's been passed, uh, a lot of the people who believe uh, the Trump narratives are now uh, seeing it as a way of, you know, consolidating on some of the things that Trump talked about. So that it's a really, really, and, and the White House is not actually given the right message or messages um, at the right time because the, the narrative is still very much in the air and there's no counter narrative to that as much as we know. It seems like Biden always has his hands very full, especially in the United States. Thank you so much for that update, uh, Rotimi Kadeh.